So the Women's Prize was just announced. The long list for the Women's Prize was just announced a couple hours ago, a good six hours ago now. But I wanted to kick off a video because this week I'm going to be trying to read as much as I can of the long list because I think it's a week from today that the International Booker Prize long list is announced. So I wanna give this week to the Women's Prize, give next week to International. And then by the time that I finish that week, hopefully I'll have gotten more books for the Women's Prize and we can, I don't know, kind of go from there. I don't exactly know how much I want to read of it, but there are definitely books on this list that I'm excited about. And I figure I'm just gonna read whatever I can get my hands on for at least this week. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So I did my reaction to the list, which is up on my channel if you haven't seen it, but just to quickly go through the books I'm the most excited about. So it turned out that I picked like basically all the books that sounded a little weird, a little different. So I went with Cursed Bread because that was about like a town dying mysteriously or people in a town dying mysteriously. I'm a fan, which was about like social media and obsession. And I'm a little bit worried that it's gonna go the way of no one is talking about this, which I really didn't like as a book, <laughs> but I, I have hope for it. Pod, which is about dolphins and it's like traversing the sea, uh, which reminds me a lot of the other book that I'm reading right now, which is Remarkably Bright Creatures, which part of that takes is in the perspective of an octopus. I also have to read that this week. I was really hoping that it was gonna be on the long list so it would fit into this, but it's not. But I am meeting up with some friends to talk about it on Sunday. So I'm, I'm reading that one in this video. So that's kind of just like an additional, it was eligible for the women's prize, but it's not on the long list, but I'm gonna talk about it. So I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I'm like a quarter of the way through. So, uh, and it's, it's going by so quickly. So I think that I'll be able to finish that easy. Then we have the Bandit Queens, which I just wrote down murder husbands. So I don't know what that is. But I know I really liked the sound of it. And then Children of Paradise, which had something about, I think it, she, the word she used was hallucinatory read that set in an old crumbling cinema, which sounds so good. However, even though those are the things that I want to read, that doesn't necessarily mean that I can read them right now. Two of them, Cursed Bread and I'm a Fan, aren't out in the US and won't be out for quite a while. And then there's a lot of books that like aren't available at my library or on Scribd. So I think I'm gonna have to like order them or like actually purchase them if I wanna read them. But I wanna focus at the moment on the books that I do have access to. So right now the book that I could get immediately was Homesick by Jennifer Croft, which is great because I am actually interested in that. I read Books of Jacob, which she translated for Olga Tokarczuk into English, but I've never read, I think this might be her first book. So I'm happy that that's one of, also I think it's like one of the shorter ones. So I feel like that is conducive. So the ebook of it is on Scribd. So I think that I'll start there. And then there's two books that are coming to Scribd in three days on March 10th as audiobooks. And one of those is Demon Copperhead, which is great. And the other one is Stone Blind, which I'm also kind of interested in, despite the fact that it's a Greek mythology thing, which is typically something that I don't like in books. Uh, mythic books in general I have a hard time with, and then specifically Greek mythology. I think I, I just know it too well at this point. But it being a Medusa thing, I feel like I do have kind of like a soft spot for Medusa, ironically, because the whole stone thing. But I think that that's why I'm a little bit intrigued by it. Anyways, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for book awards. I just love it. It's just so fun to have like so many people reading the same books at once. What a wonderful time to be a reader, am I right? <laughs> Okay, so my hair is obviously very wet because I just took a shower, but it's the next day. Today was a decent enough day. It's been a pretty crazy work week because we had a major announcement earlier this week about a like huge reorg of our teams, but it went all right overall as a work day. Uh, and then I went to Run Club after work, which I do every Wednesday, which is basically this run club that meets up in a local pub. So I walk there after work and oh, it's a beautiful sunset today. And then I usually stop by the little library that is near there and drop off a book or two. And I thought in the spirit of this video, I would take two that had been nominated for prizes, uh, both a Booker Prize, but one was international, one was regular. One of them I really liked and one of them I really didn't. But yeah, we all meet up at a pub and then we run a 5K and then sometimes hang out afterwards. There's like a music bingo that happens. But today I just came right home afterwards and took a shower, which is, that brings you up to now. Uh, reading update. So I started reading 
Homesick by Jennifer Croft. I am 100 pages in at this point, which is pretty good. It's only 250 pages long, so I'm hoping I can finish tomorrow, and then that way I'm ready on the 10th when those two audiobooks come to Scribd. But as far as I'm feeling about Homesick, uh, it's a very quick read. There are a lot of like pictures in it that are supposed to be, I think, photography that uh, Amy, one of the sisters, is taking. So it's kind of told from her perspective, and it's about these two sisters, Amy and Zoe. And Zoe has a few uh, health problems. I don't tend to like books that are set from a child's perspective, even if it's not in first person. Uh, they, a lot of times when they are, there's like stylistic choices that make it sound a little bit more like a child's thought and observations, but I do think that for a book like that Jennifer Croft is doing a really good job because I, somebody who doesn't really like that kind of thing, am finding myself enjoying reading this book. So I feel like that's that's got to say something good, right? The pictures are kind of, I, I don't quite understand why some of them were chosen because they don't seem to match. She talks about taking pictures like in the story, but the photos that we get don't seem to match up too well, but maybe that's on purpose. Like. Uh, maybe that would draw too much attention away from what's actually happening if you were just trying to be like, oh, what image is that? And like looking at the pictures. Also, the writing is a little bit like choppier. I think that's because it's from a child's perspective. I'm hoping that as she ages, the style will age as well, the style of the writing. I think that it has already because she has grown up a fair bit since the beginning of the book like to the point that I'm at now. Overall I think the characters do stand out really well especially Amy and Zoe. I think they're really like solidified in my brain you know who's who, who likes what, uh, how they feel towards each other, all that kind of a thing. And then the other characters which is really like parents, grandparents, I don't get quite as much of a sense of who they are but I think that that makes sense in the context of the book. But yeah, very quick read because of the way that it's written and also the chapters are incredibly short. So I'm sure that there's a lot of empty page space in like the actual book. Well, it's nighttime again. It's been another 24 hours since I've checked in. So I have finished Homesick by Jennifer Croft, which is actually a memoir, which I did not realize. I mean, it's kind of like part, part memoir. So I guess she initially wrote it to be a novel or started writing it to be a novel and she started writing it in Spanish initially because she was living in Argentina at the time. She had like chosen the names and everything for the characters and all this and then ended up deciding to make it basically be a memoir about herself. She's Amy and her sister who in real life is named Anne Marie but in the story is called Zoe. So I don't know quite how much of it is true to life, but I assume a good deal for it to be called a memoir at all, but I don't know what the parameters are around that. And I think that that does add quite a bit to it. <laughs> Hello. Hi, buddy. But I think one thing that I talked about yesterday was that I was kind of hoping that as Amy ages in the book, like her writing or the storytelling will also age up, will also progress and it did definitely like the style of it became a lot different as the story went on and a lot more grown-up feeling which was nice I really enjoyed that aspect of it there were some really hard parts to read during the story that I really struggled with and, and had a hard time with I had to take like a little break during one portion of the book because I was just not in a great headspace but I think overall the story is uh, like oddly uplifting. I mean barely like a lot of it is is really down feeling but the overall sense that you get at the end of it is a little bit lighter and I'm impressed that she was able to do that. So yeah now I kind of have to pick like what book I want to read next from the long list and I do have one more option than I thought I was going to have so that's kind of nice. So Demon Copperhead and Stone Blind come to Scribd tomorrow as the audiobook but then I also have the option of reading Memphis because the library book is going to get here in like a day or two. <laughs> and uh, the audiobook and the ebook came up at the same time from the library and the wait was supposed to be really long for at least one of those, I can't remember which one. So now I have the option of reading that one. So I think tomorrow I'm gonna start my day with doing like a try a chapter of each of those to decide which of them I want to read next. Oh boy, I remember why I never film in the living room. I hate the lighting in here. So it's officially Friday and this morning I read a chapter of each of the three books that I have as possibilities for what to read next.
next. I think for one of them, for Stone Blind, I technically read more than a chapter, I think. I was listening to it. I definitely think that I wanna wait to have a physical copy or an ebook copy of that book because there's a list of like characters at the beginning and who they are, and it just kind of read through them as the audiobook. And maybe I would be fine without it, but I, I don't know. But either way, I think that that of the three of them is the one that I'm least interested in reading at this time. I did enjoy like the first little section. I think that Zeus is definitely the feeling that I got of him, like learning about him and what kind of dude he is. I think that this book sticks to that. Really a jerk, really terrible, just a terrible, I was gonna say human being, but he's not, a terrible god. Then I did a chapter of Demon Copperhead, and that one, while it didn't grab my attention right away, I really liked the writing of it, and I'm interested to learn more about the boy that it's about. And then I read a chapter of Memphis, which I actually have an ebook of, and the physical copy is coming soon. That one I enjoyed right away, and I could definitely see myself really liking this book. I think of the three of them, Demon and Copperhead and Memphis are probably really close to the same. Memphis actually might be a little bit higher as far as just the first chapters go. <laughs> but I think I'm gonna wait until Memphis comes from the library physically to read that one because that should be like today or tomorrow I'll be getting that. And I might as well like read that physically if I can. That's my preferred method for reading. And also I wanna make sure to read Demon Copperhead during this time because I feel like we're gonna see it on other awards this year. And I just wanna be prepared. It just sounds nice to be like ahead of things. Oh, this is quite the creepy video. <laughs> I thought that the lighting would be a little bit nicer in here, but I guess not. Yeah, this is this is as good as it gets. I haven't done an update today or ooh, I haven't done an update since yesterday morning, I wanna say, but it's been kind of busy. Uh, we had a family party get together thing last night. And then today I was so tired for most of the day because of that. And then I had a 5K that I just did. I did read today, but not any of Demon Copperhead, my bad. I focused on, uh, what is it called? Incredibly Bright Creatures? Some, it's Remarkably Bright Creatures. So I finished that today because I am meeting up with a friend that actually was here. I was gonna give her the book back, but I'm just gonna give it to her tomorrow. But I'm meeting up with a, a, three other friends that have just read the book and we are having kind of a mini book club as a extension of the larger book club because she's moving to California in two weeks and she's not going to be here for the actual book club and she really wanted to read this book and talk about it so we're just doing our own our own little book club tomorrow uh, but that meant that of course I needed to finish that book <laughs> so my original goal was for that book to be on the women's press long list and then I could read it as a part of this and talk about it but it wasn't so it feels weird to talk about it but I will because why not it is a book I read during this video it was it was really Really good it was really cute I do think it makes sense that it wasn't on the long list it was a little bit more cutesy than what I would expect to see on the women's prize long list a little less literary fiction but it was still really sweet and I really enjoyed it basically it's about this woman who is kind of dealing with a lot of grief in her life and uh, she has a son that passed away a while ago before the book, but still that doesn't get any easier, I assume. And then her husband has more recently passed away. And so she's kind of on her own, but she does have like friends and everything. And she works in this aquarium where this is octopus. And you also get the octopus's perspective, which is kind of funny. Uh, and it just ends up being a really sweet tale about like this woman kind of finding her own good life that might not be what she expected earlier in her life, but is still really great and just really works for her. And also it's about an octopus. <laughs> Um, but it was really sweet, really cute, and I'm excited to talk about it tomorrow uh, with some friends, even though it's it wasn't on the women's prize long list. <laughs> oh, and the race today went well too. I didn't, I wasn't like running to try to do it fast. I was kind of just going with my friends at their pace because I just didn't. I didn't feel like really going for it today. You know, there's there's no reason. So it was just, it was a fun race. And I think it was a good way to remind myself that I could have fun during these things because I did a 15K like two weeks ago and I was really hard on myself the whole time and I felt miserable. And it was like one of the worst running experiences I've ever had. And so I think that I needed today to just be like, these can just be fun. <laughs> like You can chill out. Anyways, I have to get out of this abandoned parking lot because there's nobody left <laughs> and I have to go home and eat or something. But anyways. Bye. <laughs> so I haven't checked in 
oof, since Saturday, I think. And it's Tuesday now, Tuesday morning. Basically, it's just been insanely busy and I've been trying to like squeeze in reading Demon Copperhead whenever I can, well, listening to it. Just had to do the audiobook. But yeah, Sunday I went to like this wine tasting thing and the group of us talked about remarkably bright creatures for a very long time. It was a wonderful discussion that brought up fantastic talking points. I can't speak right now. I'm up way early for me. But I just, just now filmed my reaction to the International Booker long list because that was announced at 5 a.m. this morning. Did not make it in time for that. But anyways, Demon Copperhead. I really enjoyed it. It was, ugh, it was so infuriating to read sometimes because you just don't want what's happening to be happening. Like, I felt like some scenes I would be going through denial. Like, no, 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 this isn't happening. This can't be happening. No, no, surely not. But it was and it did. <laughs> but yeah, I basically like sped read this thing. I think the majority of it I read yesterday which was a lot, but I, I do understand what all the excitement is about it. I don't think it's like the most incredible book ever. I think that there is, like I have a hard time with books that are like insanely hyped. It's just hard for any book to live up to that expectation, you know? And while Demon Copperhead is a really fantastic book, it's really well written, I do still think that there are some things it lacks. I think that some pacing could have been better. So I don't think it's like the perfect book, but I do think that it is a really, really good book. <laughs> but yeah, the uh, conversation around like poverty is really at the forefront of this book. And I think not just poverty, but like Southern poverty, like what is uh, considered like the South of the US and like the accents that go along with that. And specifically the more rural people that have very thick accents and the kind of judgments around those people assuming that they all believe a certain thing. And so there's definitely like a conversation around that with this book. I think if this is shortlisted, I'll do a full review video on this one just because there's so much to talk about, honestly. But also once Demon kind of experiences a city and understands that more than he does know that like, okay, not everybody in a city is necessarily well off or has like really good opportunity to be well off. There is still like the class divide that's a really big gap to try to leap. So yeah, there's so much I could talk about with this book, but I think I'm going to leave it here for this video because honestly, I just really wanna see what books I can get from the International Booker Long List from the library. I'm very excited. Uh, so hopefully you were joining me for that adventure as well. But if you're just sticking around for Women's Prize on my channel, don't worry, there will be more videos about it. So definitely subscribe and I will see you there. Bye.